AT&T, where I was at Bell Labs, of course it runs a very large network. Networks are related to graphs and combinatorics, and you feel pretty comfortable there. You develop certain techniques and certain intuition, and often that serves you well. And many times, of course, uh, though, you need some new tools, because if the old tools would have solved the problem, it would have been solved already. So you always have to uh, you know, have a prepared mind, and you know, there's a nice saying that kind of guides me from time to time. Uh, the main obstacle to progress is not ignorance, but the illusion of knowledge. When you think you know something, that can blind you from just the facts are shouting out, look, you know, I'm not true. Or, and once you understand that you don't know something, then you can, your mind's more receptive to saying, okay, well, let's, let's take a more fundamental look. Time and again, it happens so often that something that seems to be very pure and not related to any practical problem turns out to be very practical. There was a famous mathematician, English mathematician named G.H. Hardy, who was an expert in number theory, and he said one of the reasons he liked it so much was because there was no way that it really could ever be applied to anything. And it turns out it's one of the most applied subject now just basically because of the computer in many ways. The computer converts all kinds of information, voice, images, digital text, into strings, typically of zeros and ones. And if you have a string of zeros and ones, you can break it up into blocks. You can think of those as numbers. And once you have numbers, you use the tools from number theory. So in fact, many of the basic techniques in transmitting information, encrypting it, and compressing it, and so forth, uh, rely heavily on techniques coming right out of mathematics. So uh, it happens so often that you, you expect that it's going to happen. So even though what you're working on may seem very far out and not related to anything you can think of, uh, sooner or later, and probably sooner, someone's going to say, by the way, that's just the tool we needed to do some amazing thing. You know, the Google search engine is based very heavily on mathematics, you know, kind of sophisticated too. Quite a few of my colleagues uh, were pretty heavily involved in SIAM, and so I felt it was useful to try to reach out to some of the other organizations to try to bring mathematics more together. My focus was more on the other math organizations like the American Math Society and the Math Association of America. You know, it's the same issue as, as they say, herding cats. Mathematicians are pretty individual characters, and uh, everyone has their own ideas. And that's, uh, it's the source of a lot of uh, interesting developments in mathematics, but also it's a weakness in a sense compared to chemistry. For example, chemists tend to be pretty unified. There's one American Chemical Society. It's very effective and it serves members from elementary school to retirement, you know, cradle to grave, as they say, where in mathematics, You'll have some 15 organizations, there's several in statistics, and operations research, actuarial science, management science, of course research, college, two-year college, it's just, uh, so, but it's a diverse community, but it keeps it more interesting. It was a very uh, moving, in a way, a very stimulating, very exciting commitment that he's making 
to put science front and center, as he said in his inauguration, to, to have it occupy its, its rightful place at the table, that is. And he would like to have decisions based on facts and not the other way around, he said, I've got a big. And to put a real scientist, for example, for the first time ever, in the head of the Department of Energy, which is Steve Chu, who is an old friend of mine from Bell Labs, a lot of Bell Labs you know, alumni are in various uh, positions there now. And uh, he, of course, he was, uh, you know, preaching to, to the converted already at the National Academy of Sciences, but he was very, uh, very forceful. And, uh, you know, people are very enthused, very uh, optimistic that good things will happen.